In this video, I'm going to talk about the difference between a confounding variable and a lurking variable. Um, so, when we were studying experiments, we um, were concerned about what we call a confounding variable. What would happen is, is that we wanted to isolate the effects of the treatment on a response variable. So we would do an experiment and um, try to control all other factors so that whatever, whatever effect the treatment that we wanted to study had on the response variable, we could measure that. So a confounding variable is something that sort of confuses the issue. It kind of acts on the response variable at the same time that the treatment does. And if we don't control this confounding variable, then um, what it does is it, it will cause bias or it will increase uh, variability. Um, and both are not good because it's hard to see the effects on the response variable. An example of this might be if you uh, were going to study um, exercise on um, weight loss. So we were looking at weight loss and we were interested in exercise. and um, we did an experiment. So the, the problem is, is that if we, if, we, if we see that people that exercise have less weight, um, we, we may have some other factors that we would have to consider. For example, age could be a confounding variable. So we would have to control that. We would have to select people of the same age or, or make sure that we have a variety of ages, something like that to control age. The other thing is diet. What people eat, how many calories they eat on a daily basis. That would be have to, uh, a couple things that we would have to control. If we didn't, then these things would be considered confounding um, to the experiment because they're acting on, they're, they're having an effect on the amount of weight somebody has um, the same, at the same time that exercise, that exercise has an effect. Okay, so that's a confounding variable. Now, what is a lurking variable? Lurking variable is similar, uh, but what it does is it acts on the predictor variable at the same time that it acts on the response variable. And so when we're doing linear models, what happens is uh, as the lurking variable acts on the predictor variable, let's say it, the predictor variable increases and at the same time the y, the y variable increases. So what happens is, is that we get sort of this, this linear picture, which is fine. And we can build a model and we can say that this variable, whatever it is, x, is, a, is very effective at being able to predict y. So from a predictor point of view, it's fine. What we want to avoid, though, is saying anything about cause. We don't don't fall for the, the trap and say something like the x value causes um, the response variable to increase. And when you do that, you've sort of crossed the line. You have to have an experiment. You have to have other information to make those kind of claims. The scatter plot uh, on its own doesn't support that conclusion. So some examples of that might be, um, the, the one I like to joke about the most is ice cream. As ice cream sales increase, it turns out that in the inner city, 
uh, the murder rate increases. So um, that's kind of silly. The last thing we want to do is say that you know we should stop eating ice cream uh, because murder rates are going up. But the two are highly correlated in some situations. Another uh, situation is is that the number of uh, I think it's the the number of firemen that go to a fire as that increases the amount of damage caused by the fire increases. So there, um, that's, that's also, it would also be silly to suggest that we should send fewer um, firemen to the fire because it'll cause more damage. That's not the situation. In the case of the ice cream, the lurking variable is the temperature. As temperature rises, people eat more ice cream, but also it turns out that as temperature rises, um, uh, there's more murders. And the same thing here, the, the size of the fire is the lurking variable. When the si fire is big, you have to send more firemen there to put it out, but a big fire is going to burn more, so it's going to cause, cause more damage. Okay, so in general, it's not so much whether or not you call it the right thing, a lurking variable or a confounding variable. When you're evaluating a study, um, pointing out when, when there's something going on that doesn't make sense, that's probably more important than actually giving it the proper label. But if you can, think through these and uh, do the best you can. Good luck. I don't know if I like that.